Hello, my name is Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net. So this video will be about transcribing copying from jazz recordings. I had a few questions from visitors and they asked me, okay, you know, I transcribed single line solos from Wes Montgomery or Joe Pass. You know, when they comp, when they accompany, what are they doing? How can I learn that? It's just, it's hard. You know, they play four or five notes at the same time and I have to hear all that. So here's my main advice. Start with a recording that has no horn. Not a guitar player that is playing chords behind a saxophone solo or a trumpet solo. It's too hard. There's too much things going on. Uh, hopefully you can find a good guitar trio for which you like the chords. And it's bass, drum, and guitar. And even better, just bass and guitar. And that's, why, that's where Ed Bickert comes into play. Ed Bickert was a great Canadian jazz guitarist from Toronto. There's a CD link at the end of this page. It's called Live at the Garden Party, a duo with Don Thompson, great bass player, great recording. There's no actual transcription on the market, books or whatever on the internet, there, there's none of that. So it's a great idea to do it yourself if you like the sound of it. Ed Bickert's a very strong harmonic player. He plays almost only chords all the time and melodizes the, the upper note. So it's great. It's just like almost as if he played piano. Uh, the main difficulty in identifying chord is probably the fact that there are many, many notes squished together. If I play this, do you? Okay, what's that? So what I did, I took a transcription software called The Amazing Slowdown. I know it may sound cheesy or you say, okay, but you, you're cheating. Yes, I am, but uh, it gave me the chance to transcribe more music more easily. Take the amazing slow downer, take only a part of the song, let's say your five second where you hear the chord, and loop it over and over and over. You can compare the notes that you're playing with the notes on the recording. You can finally find the voicing that suits what you hear. It's better than just listening to it from a, a CD player or your computer. Plus you can slow it down or you can turn down the bass or turn up the volume or you know. So that's the first advice I have. Get a good slow down software. The other advice I have for you is, you know, when you find a voicing from a jazz guitarist and you're curious about what came before or after, you might want to change strings. You know, if you hear uh, s something like this, it might be played here. Who knows? Because in my efforts of transcription for Ed Bickert stuff, uh, I found out that sometimes if the next chord doesn't make sense, because the previous chord you didn't play in the right place, because more often than not, the chords are really close, close movements. You know, if you hear this, you're going to hear this after. And that's the way it goes, because music moves like this. You have to change, try and change the string set on which you're playing a chord. If you're playing a chord on strings 4, 3, 2, try playing on strings 3, 2, 1. It might be better. It might be better for the next chord or the next song. Another aspect you have to take into consideration is transcribe the rhythms. If you don't have all the notes of the chord voicing yet, or you're, you're, you have a doubt, don't worry. Just get, okay, it's two eight notes followed by a dotted quarter, write it down, or keep in mind, and come back to it later. If you have the rhythms right and one or two notes, it's going to be fine for you. You can always come back and refine your transcription. Also, you don't have to write down all the stuff you transcribe. You can just play it over and over to incorporate this, this type of playing into your playing from things you really like. So here's a, a, little bit, a little bit about myself on comping and trying to transcribe Ed Bickert. I spent three or four days on only eight bars of music, maybe at uh, 45 minutes to an hour a day. And it's okay, you have to take your time to do this thing. Especially if you're slowing down, voicing after voicing and see, okay, what is he playing? Here's the, here's the trick. I transcribe a tune called um, Come Rain or Come Shine. The bass, plays clearly an F major 7 chord. It's clear, you hear that. Other recordings of the same tune starts with a major chord. So I, I hear Ed Bickert go and play blah, this chord. I hear this. Which is a D minor triad here, D, F, A. It suits perfectly. It's, it's really good, it's beautiful, but there's something else in my ears. I'm like, what, what? If there's a note missing, there's a squish, there's like a... I grind somewhere in the chord and I can't find it, so I, I slowed it down, took the software, did this, did okay, no, 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 chord. And finally, I realized this, Ed is playing that E flat on the 
the fifth string. And what is that exactly? This E flat, D, F, and A. It sounds more like an F7 chord. Oh yeah, the flat seven. What's happening there? Why? Why is that? Things like that. It's good to know. It's good to take your time. The final recordings. You might think you might find things that you you assumed. Oh, it's just F major seven. That's what the chart says. Or that's what my friend said. It's a major chord. But hey, in the end, you might find that your transcription of West Montgomery chords is just oh, there's one more note. And finally, it's not minor. It's minor seven flat five, or it's not a sharp five. It's a flat five, or you know, all this type of stuff. So be careful with that. Use a good transcription software such as the amazing Slow Downer or Transcribe, and take your time. Take one bar at a time. Even if you spend the whole week on four bars, it doesn't matter. Write the rhythms down, or play just the rhythms if you have trouble finding the actual chords for that. So thanks for watching. I'll see you soon on JazzGuitarLessons.net.